Apparently, men tend to have higher total credit limits than female borrowers, according to some research. So let's get into the story. So it's no secret that there is a gender pay gap in the U.S., according to CNBC. Women earned just 84% of what men made in 2020, according to the Pew Research Center. Consequently, it would take female workers an extra 42 days to make the same income men did that year. Now, research from Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia points to another potential gap between genders with regard to total bank card borrowing limits. So an unexplained gender difference in bank card limits of about $1,323 exists, with male borrowers having higher limits, the research found. That was after controlling for credit score, income, and demographic characteristics. So the research, which is based on data spanning 10 years, found the gap between the sexes fluctuated over time. So the difference between genders also varied by the size of consumers' credit limits. For smaller limits, women tended to have the upper hand with regard to borrowing power. For higher limits, say $30,000 or $40,000, men tended to have access to more credit. Women were also inclined to own more credit cards but have lower average balances, the research found. The research is based on data from so mortgage applications which have no co-applicants and therefore could be equitably separated by gender, and consequently the results may not be indicative of all people with a credit card, said Nathan Blazek, research fellow at the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia's Consumer Finance Institute. Now here's the thing, right? I feel like sometimes on these sort of things, on some of these studies, it could potentially be a little bit misleading, right? Because I feel like it really depends on a situational type of thing, right? And also, like, what is the actual career that they're doing, right? Because, look... If there's more, like, let's say if there's more guys average working in, like, massive companies, like, in the higher positions of bigger companies, they probably have a little bit more access to higher credit limits, right? Due to maybe the relationships that they have, potentially from their income, which, again, they basically said that, you know, factor in for income, right? Right? And here's the thing, right? It's just like, there could be a lot of variables to this whole situation, right? And then you also got to really think about it too. It's probably potentially easier for credit card companies to basically be like, okay, this individual has one credit card that has a credit limit of 50 grand, right? Instead of this individual has like five different credit cards with $10,000 each on those credit cards, right? Because the thing you also got to think about too, are these cards getting maxed out, right? Now this is anecdotal, but I have seen more ladies max out their credit cards compared to guys now again there's no real like evidence like backing that it's just anecdotal evidence right because typically ladies tend to be a little bit more of emotional shoppers or like they shop to basically feel better whereas guys typically make big purchases typically right And they usually just like want it and they plan for it and they just get it, right? But they tend to be a lot bigger ticket. But there's, there tends to be ladies who shop more often on smaller items that tends to add up to potentially maxing out their credit cards, which is why they potentially need more than one credit card. 
So that's something to really think about as well. And if you disagree, feel free to give your opinion down below, right? It's just that's what I've seen a lot of is that typically ladies will have more credit cards because they will sometimes max out on more than one credit card because they need another credit card so that they can keep buying things. And this is why you need to stay away from debt. So Blasek co-wrote the research with Anna Tranfa... I don't even know how to pronounce that. A business analyst at the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. We weren't sure what the size was going to be, Blazek said, of the difference in credit limits between genders. It ended up being relatively small, especially when you think about what the gender pay gap is. The reason for the difference is likely not based on biases from financial institutions, he added, due to the fact that credit offers are generally automatically generated. The gender wage gap definitely plays a role in the discrepancies, though to what extent is still unclear, Blazak said. Now, again, here's another thing that you also got to think about, too, right? Because they keep mentioning the gender gap, right? But if you factor in ladies choosing jobs that potentially do not pay as much or that they basically choose to study fields that typically will not be high income producing fields and also you have some ladies who typically want to maybe stay at home and raise kids right maybe that's what they want to do maybe they end up getting pregnant and they have to walk away from work or take a job that pays less and work less right there's a lot of factors that come into this that i feel like they're not truly clear about all of them now it is possible that the description starts when men and women originate their first credit card which sets initial limits and then accumulates over time the research also found that there tend to be slight differences in the kinds of credit card mail offers that men and women receive. Women tend to receive slightly fewer offers than men, as well as different kinds of solicitations. While surveys on gender experiences with credit cards and limits exist, this is one of the first research papers to apply large administrative data to try to answer the question of how men's and women's experiences differ, Blazak said. The hope is that this opens the door for other researchers to step in and start thinking about some of these questions, he said. So here's the thing. I mean, I thought this was kind of interesting, but again, I feel like they're missing out on a lot of potential variables that could be potentially affecting this. Now, here's the thing, right? If there truly is a gap, if there truly is some weird discrepancy, right? I would not blame the credit card companies because, yeah, those credit card companies are doing everything based off data, right? They're doing everything based off like automated algorithms to constantly test things to see what makes them the most money. Like point blank, their sole purpose is to make as much money as possible and they're going to optimize it to the highest degree, right? So it's not really surprising as to whatever outcomes that might come from credit card companies just because they're doing exactly what they basically planned to do from the very beginning is to make as much money as possible, lending out money that people should not really be uh, borrowing, point blank, right? And here's the thing. We are not going to yell at you for using a credit card, right? But you need to understand that having a higher credit limit doesn't mean that that is actually your money. And a lot of people think that it is. A lot of people use their credit card as if it's their money. It's not. It is not your money. It is the credit card's money. And if you don't pay it, you are screwed. If you don't pay it on time, you are screwed. If you max out your card, you are screwed, right? Like a credit card 
is one of the easiest ways to screw up your finances because there's a lot of people who might just end up being at the wrong place at the wrong time, get emotional or react badly to something or maybe want to impress someone and they end up buying something on a credit card that they can't afford and they screw themselves long term. So stay away from credit cards if you have a problem with spending money on credit cards. Like here's the thing. If you carry any balance on a credit card, okay? Meaning you do not pay it on time. Meaning you actually pay the credit card company interest. You need to stay away from credit cards. Period. End of story. You need to cut up your credit cards because you cannot trust yourself around credit cards. So if you want to learn how to get out of debt so that you can live a much better life when it comes down to money, go to 40 to learn how to get out of debt.